The war in Gaza is grinding to a stalemate, while the United States, Egypt, Qatar and some other countries are trying to find an elusive ceasefire, one man is standing in the way, Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu. He has gone back fully on Palestinian statehood, a goal which many of his allies say may be politically smart for his domestic audience. But it will not play well with his international partners like the United States and Gulf Arab countries with whom he's trying to normalize ties. In Gaza, Netanyahu is leading a military campaign to defeat Hamas and free the remaining hundred odd Israeli hostages who were captured during the October 7th attack. At home, he's fighting to keep his extreme right wing coalition secure and clinging on to power by a thread. It has got to a point where both goals are now becoming contradictory. And on both fronts, Netanyahu is struggling. On Crux Decode, can Benjamin Netanyahu survive this war and eat his political cake too? In Gaza, more than 100 hostages still remain captive despite more than three months of war and protracted negotiations to try and release them. Hamas is battered, but they have not been defeated. More than 25,000 Gazans have been killed, but the war remains inconclusive. Right now, it is deadlocked. In Israel, polls show the Prime Minister would easily lose an election if one were to be held today. Netanyahu is becoming a political liability not just for his own party, but his extreme right-wing allies who are keeping him in power. It's a clash of interests between what will keep him politically alive, at the same time not isolate him internationally. To retain power and preserve his right-wing coalition, he must reject the idea of a Palestinian state. But that is unacceptable to America and to much of the Arab world. And to burnish his legacy, Netanyahu is also pushing for a landmark peace deal with Saudi Arabia. That is a long-term strategic goal for Israel. Saudi Arabia, though, will not agree to normalizing ties without an explicit Israeli commitment to a two-state solution. And without Saudi Arabia, there will not be a genuine post-war recovery in Gaza. But Netanyahu is known to be a political survivor. Israel's longest serving prime minister, he's often described as a political magician who is able to alter his fortunes, even if that were to mean adopting new positions which are completely contradictory to his old positions. Given his long history of political survival, both his allies and his critics say it is too early to predict the premature collapse of his government before its tenure formally completes in 2026. It might be too early to write BB's political obituary just yet. As opposition leader back in 1996, he trailed by as much as 20 points in the polls and he looks certain to lose in a general election. Then he waged a campaign against the Oslo peace accords. It worked. Within six months, he was elected prime minister. But once he assumed office, Netanyahu then reluctantly went along with parts of the Oslo accord. He even conceded some territory to the Palestinians. In 2017, when he was being investigated on corruption charges and later put on trial, many said, this is it. This is Bibi's political demise. That case is still going on a good five years later. And despite losing many of his allies, parts of his political base, he has still managed to win four out of the next five elections. Even after effectively suspending the peace process with the Palestinians, he sealed landmark diplomatic deals in 2020 with as many as four Arab countries which had shunned Israel on the Palestinian issue. That includes Bahrain, the UAE, Morocco and Sudan. But the war in Gaza has complicated things for the Prime Minister. There is no end to this war which can keep Bibi relevant both at home and abroad. In Gaza, Netanyahu's two main objectives are mutually incompatible. Defeating Hamas would most likely cost the lives of many hostages who are still in captivity. Alternatively, a diplomatic deal to free the hostages would most likely leave Hamas in charge of Gaza. Either outcome is not going to be good for Netanyahu. Earlier this week, Itamar Ben-Gvir, who is Netanyahu's far-right coalition partner, 
threatened to quit the government if Netanyahu negotiated a deal with Hamas in which hostages were freed, but Hamas retained control of Gaza. Should Netanyahu lose the support of the far right, then he could partner with centrist leaders like former army chief Benny Gantz or the opposition leader Yair Lapid. Both of them have offered to support a hostage deal and put an end to this war. An alliance with centrist parties would also give Netanyahu the political cover to allow the Palestinian Authority, which currently runs the Israeli-occupied West Bank, to govern Gaza as well. And that would be a big win because that would again delegitimize Hamas and its control of Gaza. But several allies and analysts have said that such a move, if Netanyahu were to accept it, would anger his right-wing base. Much of his base wants Jewish Israelis to resettle in Gaza. And that would give right-wing rivals like Ben Gavir a boost in the elections. Since the October 7th attack, popular support for a two-state solution has dwindled. If an election is called, Netanyahu wants to center the campaign on a singular question of Palestinian statehood. The Israeli Prime Minister thinks he can recover some of the lost votes by presenting himself as the only leader who can stand up to both American and Arab pressure to try and call for a Palestinian state. He also feels, particularly after the October 7th attack, that there is a majority of Israelis who feel the same way, that Bibi Netanyahu is the best bet for an anti-two-state solution. Netanyahu's public rejection of Palestinian sovereignty is at odds with what his envoys are currently discussing with both the United States and Saudi Arabia. These conversations are happening back channel right now. Netanyahu thinks he can walk the political tightrope persuading Saudi Arabia to normalize ties with Israel. In exchange, he would agree to a nominal plan which would give some kind of cursory statehood to Palestine. Netanyahu, ever the political survivor, is banking on this double game. He says to his own constituency back home, don't worry, I will never agree to a Palestinian state. And then he says to the US and to Saudi Arabia, don't worry, we will find a solution. But opinion polls since October 7th show that the public has lost faith in Netanyahu. Just this past week, Israel's leading private television station, Channel 12, published a poll suggesting that less than a quarter of Israelis preferred Netanyahu over Benny Gantz, who happens to be his main rival. Can Bibi Netanyahu, the great political survivor of Israel, outlive what could easily be the last fight of his life?